And so, we continue. Welcome back. It's been a while, but it is finally that you can tell it's been a while because a certain Tamo Alton has aged just a little bit. It's been a while since we posted the first episode of this series, and that is because when that episode went up, it was around the time that it became very goddamn clear that FIFA 20 career mode was just garbage. It's the only real way to put it. Now, unfortunately, it's still not perfect. It's still not where it should be, but it is in a better state. So, of course, this series was originally postponed because of that mess. Ended up starting the MLB series with the Tigers. That's not going anywhere anytime soon, but it is time for this series to come back. For those of you who do not recall, allow me to state the premise of this series, and it is pretty straightforward. Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. It is a Nation United Finland edition. Now, for those of you who do not know, of course, what the Nation United series is, whether on this or NHL or MLB, for that matter, we do it everywhere. We will only be using players from one nation. We did this last year with the Canadians of Kaiserslautern in the German tiers, a series that unfortunately had to end a little bit too soon due to FIFA 20 arriving. Chokes on me, that could have kept going. Very frustrating stuff, but I digress. In the series, we will only be using Finnish players, whether it be already established players, although to that point, there aren't as many top-notch players available to us as, say, you know, the Canada series with the likes of Alfonso Davies and Jonathan David. We will also, of course, be using players from the Youth Academy, and that is it. Transfers are allowed, of course, to acquire those players, but it is going to be a very Academy-heavy series for us this time out. Now, as far as where we find ourselves with HJK Helsinki... The original concept for this, <clears throat> excuse me, is still what we are running with. With Bury FC pretty much being kicked out of the football, you know, the English football league system, although apparently there's still some stuff going on with that. Uh, a former player of ours from our Tranmere Rovers series last year, the Finnish wonder known as Teemu Altonen, picked up on the opportunity. He took advantage and managed to buy his way in to the English Football League system, replacing Bury FC. Moving his childhood club, HJK Helsinki, the most successful Finnish club in that nation, over to the English tier system as we take Bury's spot in League One. And we're going to see what we can do from here. So not... A typical road to glory, most you know, most do start in the fourth tier in League 2, but we start in League 1, and we're going to see just how successful of a first season we can have. So I think that pretty much sums it up. FIFA career mode was garbage, we're back, Finns only, former player from the Tranmere Rover series, Tamo Walton, and takes over, and we're going to see just how successful we can be. Now, we also ran a finished series in NHL last year, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, we'll let that, we'll let the success or lack thereof, you know, st you know, speak for itself. And if you didn't watch that series, feel free to check it out. So the first step for us here is pretty damn simple. We need to hope that there is a top-notch scout available, and at the very least, there is a four-star, four-star scout in the form of Alfie Harrison, who we will absolutely pick up. Now, you could debate whether or not it's worth it for me to try to bring in some other options with this money immediately, but I don't really think that's that's not really going to be possible with the budget that we have of 3.5, nearly $3.6 million. So, Alfie Harrison will be brought in. We are going to send him out to Finland, and he will be there for the next nine months. Again, we can only have one scout in one region, so Alfie Harrison will be able to do the job for us until we deem it necessary for us to try and bring in a five-star scout. A quick look at the team, because for this first window, uh, we do have it shut down. I don't want the AI teams making a ton of moves right out of the gates, so we will be simming uh, the majority of this season very, very quickly, because... <clears throat> I gotta be honest, yeah, the first half of the season 
really isn't important to me. What it is important for is for us to find those first few players from the academy, while also hopefully be able, you know, being able to sell some players. So Rudikoff, for example, will obviously be on the transfer list. Ustatalo will be hanging around until further notice, until we can find somebody better. Same thing with Robin Coleman. Victor Luis, obviously, will try to move out. Any Finn we are going to hold on to for as long as we can, including Daniel O'Shaughnessy. But everybody else, we'll try to move them out and rack up as much of a transfer budget <clears throat> as we possibly can. So we'll be blocking all of the offers here. William Para will be moved out, and I'm hoping that, you know, this <clears throat> that this strategy here will provide us at least a decent enough start to not immediately be relegated as well. Although if we do end up selling a ton of players, you know, after you know, after the window opens, then maybe we will have a bad enough second half that it could ultimately see us be sent down, which again, if that happens, it's not the worst thing in the world. It would be pretty detrimental. Now, I want to point out Etu Vertainen who is going to be one of the star players of this team. When you look at Finns on SoFIFA, there really aren't that many guys to build around. You have the top-notch goalkeeper in Lukas Hedretsky, I believe it is, who plays for Bayer in the Bundesliga. He's an 83 overall, but he's 29 years old. There's a 33 overall or a 33-year-old center back who's a 79, but again, he's 33. So you are looking at someone like Vertainen with a 77 potential. That's pretty much the best that we can work with. I mean, yeah, it's going to be fun to bring in some of the veterans if we can. Bringing in Tamo Puki from Norwich is absolutely a part of the goal. Uh, the good thing is, though, we at least have one of these younger players to build around on this starting team. But the rest we are going to have to acquire. So that is the state of the roster for now. And what we're going to look to do here training-wise is pretty simple. It's going to be focusing on Vertainen. It's not going to be focused on Tarasov, the Russian, but Karainen as well will be a featured player. We only have two players that show up as uh, promising, so not a great start. And if you look at the goalkeepers as well, you know, maybe not the worst idea. Maybe not the worst idea to train them up. Kind of a tough call, actually. Let's, let's take a look to see if either of the two goalkeepers we will be keeping are worth building up. Robin Coleman is probably worth building up actually maybe we'll try to focus on him his potential actually isn't as good as Usatalo's I think we will focus on Usatalo the good thing is of course you know if you've ever played FIFA or ever watched a series you know that this game loves spitting out top-notch keepers so we're not going to be hurting in that way but Marcus Usatalo I think that's our best chance of making sure that we stay at the very least in league one is by training him up a little bit so Karainen Let's try to get that stamina up there as best we can. Excuse me. Jesus Christ. Trust me. I'm trying to just power through this recording because in terms of clearing my throat, I've tried. It's just not happening. I don't know if I'm getting sick or what. Uh, try to have him focus on his defense a little bit. And then Vertainen, of course, pretty straightforward. Focus on the shooting and focus on whatever we can for dribbling, trying to get that stamina up. 64 stamina isn't... The worst starting spot in the world, but it, of course, could be a hell of a lot better. So that's going to be the training. We're going to be able to just breeze through this, like I said. That is the game plan at the very least. You know, July to the beginning of January, I'm not all that concerned about results. It's just hopefully seeing players leave. Now, the one thing I am debating is whether or not it's the best idea to just run the best squad that we can up top, or if I do want to emphasize getting some of our younger players into the team, which probably is for the best, if you really think about it. So let's take a look here. Rudikov's going to be out, though. We know Usatalo is going to be in. As far as the formation, obviously we don't really have a set plan in that regard right now. We will figure that out in due time so I think from here I mean it's really forceful we have to worry about actually he might have been from might have been from Denmark but I think we'll we'll try to optimize having 
players that we care about in this lineup, in this, you know, whether on the bench or in the starting 11. As best we can, Rafinha take a seat for O'Shaughnessy, and Alo can take a seat as well. Like I said, with us not really caring too much, we will be able to just quick sim through the majority of this season. It's going to be pretty nice. So Bueno, take a seat. Have Pelvas there. We'll bring in this dude whose name I cannot pronounce to save my life. And with that, I think we're good. So that is going to be starting 11 for now, at least for the majority of the first few months here. So we'll sim. Of course, we have the preseason tournament that we have to worry about. A little bit of extra money would be nice, especially after the money we spent. We fall 2-0 to start. That's... That's great. And yes, we are having to restart this series, of course, with some of the some of the moves that would have been made, players moving around, you know, things have changed a lot, obviously, since we initially tried to start this series versus, you know, this point in time now. So we get an offer for Rudikoff. It's not gonna be much, but it'll do. It's very, very I mean, twenty K more than his minimum value, but the important thing is just to move on from these players, get them off of the team, know that they're going to be off the team come January, and make the best of it. Get as much money into this team as we possibly can. Now, I did pick the most expensive, or the, uh, the biggest prize pool preseason tournament, and unfortunately that is coming back to haunt me because we are getting stomped right now, but... That is okay. Of course, we could field a stronger team if we wanted to, but for now, I'm happy with it. And we'll continue to see what happens. To be honest, I'm super tempted to just jump to January. You know what? I'll see you guys when the first update comes back, or if anything important happens. Uh, because for now, this is all it's going to be for the next couple of minutes for me. So I will see you shortly as we lose again. All right, we have arrived. It's the day of our first game against MK Dons. Now, same thing applies as always with most of my series. I'm not against playing in this series with this team. In the early stages, maybe not so much. Maybe once we get some of these players signed. But the odds of winning are pretty high, even if I play on ultimate. I mean, I might have to mess around with the sliders a little bit to make it even more difficult. Like, I'm going to win consistently, which is why we typically, you know, sim to see how the team can build itself up. Obviously, for the first half of this, I'm not going to bother. Now, we start off the scouting report here with Emil Leo, who at six foot two, you would want to hope is a striker. But with that defending and a 1 to 99, I'm not sure. We're going to sign him for now. We're going to sign all these guys. Pekko Nermainen is going to be signed. Samuel Koivula is going to be signed. Tapio Altonen. Totally not the son of Tamu. Totally not. And Tommy Niemi. Oh my god, that we found an Altonen already. That is absolutely tremendous. I cannot believe that. Hold on one second. We need to. We need to go look at this kid. How good is he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's going to be good. 52 overall, 76 to a 94. This this kid, he's got good speed or, you know, decent uh, acceleration and agility. The speed's pretty garbage, but the balance is okay already. At, at a good starting point for someone with his height. I mean, that's just perfect. That's just perfect. Tom and Yami, unfortunately, a little bit lower off. So is Koivula. The fact that we ended up with three strikers, a center back, and a right back is pretty ridiculous. But Tapio Alton, the next generation, is an option for us already. So that is great. A quick look at the transfer hub, too, just to update you on the players that have already... Well, actually, not the... Uh, not the deal. Whoops. Well, didn't mean to hit back. That's okay. Hold on. As far as received offers, uh, Kamara is likely to be on the way out, but Rudikoff is gone. Faith Friday, Abilor, who has the best name in the game, is also gone, as is Evans Mensa and Rafinha, all confirmed to be moving on. Now, I have gone ahead and shortlisted all of the players who have decent potentials that we could look at. <laughs> Uh, Lassie Lapalainen, just for the traits, is interesting enough. 
Uh, there are a couple of free agents as well that once I scout them out, I may end up signing them. Yasi Tuominen is one of those options as well. Kind of like him too for the work rate that he has, but he is injury prone. But for now, he can just be a guy. Like, we just need bodies on this team. But you can see the wing, it's not as great, but we do have quite a few midfield options, quite a few striker options, a lot of center back choices, including Nicholas Moisander, who we pointed out before. Five-star weak foot, three-star skills as a center back, by the way. Pretty sure he used to play in the midfield. But there are options, and again, Lucas Adretsky, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly, top option, but 29 years old, so it's not looking too good. There isn't a ringer that we can really aim to bring in like we did in that Canada series, like I said, with Alfonso Davies primarily. He was the guy that we had our eyes set on from day one to acquire. Outside of bringing in Tamo Puki, because it's Tamo Puki, we really don't have that main target. So I will see you guys at the beginning of the next month. We're just going to sim if something interesting happens. It'll be fine. But like I said, for now, why bore you by having you focus on a team that's really just kind of an afterthought unless we get into playing and just making sure it's all fins. But we'll figure that out in January. So good news. That very first game against MK Dons, Etu Vertainen tore his hamstring. He's going to be out for six weeks. So... Say goodbye to our hopeful future striker. God, this game. Way to, way to really set us up strong out of the gates. Thanks. Jesus. All right, so we have arrived. September 1st. We're going to have another scouting report to handle. Although, while Etu Vertainen has just returned from injury, uh, we just lost another player. We've had a lot of injury trouble thus far. Let's take a look at the update, see who we have. We start off with Jimmy Rahanen, who... You would hope would be a center back with that height. Decent enough at the start. Yamari Alexi, who at 5'6", kind of hope he'd be a winger. 81 potentials, okay, all things considered in the early stages. Miko Consta, 5'5", 73-94, to 94. yes sir. Samuel Consta, the brother's Consta. 6'2", goalkeeper, I'll take that. Uh, Ulias Carilla, I'm guessing it is. Carilla, he's all right. Oh my god. Yami Hakarainen, 81 to 94. We are finding some top notch players right out of the gates here, which is just absolutely tremendous. This is what the training sessions have looked like over the past few weeks with the injury. Of course, we're going to have a little bit of trouble balancing everything out. Let's take a quick look at the academy again. So you get a look at the transfer budget right now. It's not all that impressive, but in due time, we'll have more money than we know what to do with. So we're already at this point in time where I think we are just going to prioritize top players out of the gate because signing someone like Emil Leo, he's not going to be good. We're not going to make much money from him. We're just going to let him go. Uh, Pekka Nemainen as well. The good thing is we actually do have right backs, which is shocking but Leitonen and Papanen are both pretty damn decent right backs, all things considered. Now, a 6'4 right back isn't a bad way to go, but I think we are going to optimize high potential players. Sam Koivula, I'm not sure yet. Tapio Altonen is going to be a feature of this team for years, I hope. Tommy Niemi, of course, is fine, 5'11 center back. Rahanen, jury's out. The overall is a bit lower than I'd prefer it to be, but he's got good height as a CDM. Uh, Alexi. Could be decent. Confirmed as a cam. 61 to 81. Consta as a left mid is tremendous. And then Samuel Consta. Good potential. The overall's quite low, though. But I like the idea of keeping the Consta brothers and Tapio Alton. And funny thing is, they're the same age, too. So that works out. And then Hakarainen. Honestly, we should sign him right now. And I'm going to. He's a 61 overall. He gets into this team immediately. Uh, the Constas could as well. And then you get a look at Karela. Uh, y Yami Hakarainen is going to be signed right now. Like, he's... Or not. Or not. I thought he was 16 for some reason. Whoops. I don't know why. I was looking at Consta, I think. He's going to be signed as soon as he possibly can be signed. And we're going to be training the ever-loving hell out of him very, very soon. So, like I said, with the squad that we have, and obviously the reason why I wanted to use this team is not only for the Finland connection, but because there are a good amount of Finns on this roster to start, you factor in... All of the players that I mentioned that are here. Now, I do have to uh, scout out some of them, which is a little bit of a pain in the ass. But 
you you look at the options that we have here, and again, we're not going to be bringing in like Tamu Puki anytime soon. So I think we can just focus solely on quality, especially with how beneficial the academy has already been for us. So we're going to focus on quality. I will see you guys at the beginning of October. October. We're currently, by the way, in 13th, nine points through six games. We'll pay more attention to the season as we go along. October 1st, we are in 17th in the league, 11 points through 11 games. Somehow, we have an 86 manager rating, but yeah, right now, as far as the dream is concerned of not being of not being relegated, it's, it's, you know, it's up in the air. We'll see, of course, as we head into the back half of the season. A quick look at the update here. We start off with Turka Siltawa, six foot five. We are absolutely signing you. Kamo Lo uh, Laukinen, I guess it would be five foot nine, 71 to 94 potential. Absolutely. Temu Samula, six foot three. Please be a center back and not a left back, but signing him up. Jesus, man, these reports. Kale Siltawa. 5'10", 73 to a 94. Uh, Vianney Loxanen, still not looking that bad either. And Tatu Valianen, uh, I guess it would be Valianen? I guess it would be Valianen. Valianen? Valianen. Regardless, sign him up for the moment too. <laughs> These reports have been better than I ever could have hoped for. We're getting off to a very good start. Whether or not I end up being more active with this series in terms of playing or not, Things are looking pretty good. Indeed, Siltala is a striker, you know, center forward at least. But six foot five, very interesting to see how he could work with Alton. Just to have someone of that height around, uh, that's one of my favorite things to do in career mode is have a smaller striker and then an Andy Carroll. So, Turka could be our Andy Carroll. Laukinen has a bit of a ways to go, but obviously with that potential, it's looking great. Koivula, I think, is he's obsolete. I think he's obsolete. We'll hold on to him for a little bit longer, but with Altonen and Satala, it's not looking too good. Tom and Yemi, still fine. Uh, Rahanen, it's it's not going to happen. He's He's gone, unfortunately. It's not looking too good. Yamari Alexi, 62 of 76. Yes, you heard the phone alert go off in the background. I'm sorry, I didn't turn it off. Anyway, uh, Alexi, it's just it's not going to happen there either. Miko Consta, still looking pretty good. Samuel Consta, still looking pretty good. And then again, Hacker Ryan will be signed the second he can be. And then the other Siltala, also a striker, but 73 to a 94. So getting some brother combinations. Samula is great. 6'3", CDM, 17 years old, already signable. We'll hold off for now. Vianney Laksanen, looking decent as a right back. Uh, 48 overall at 17 years old. Karila is going to be on the way out. Tattoo of Lianen, looking okay. So, again, we already have some pretty damn strong options in the academy. It's better than I thought it would be. I'm going to sim one more month here, I think, and then we'll see what happens. We'll leave this episode as it is, have you guys be able to give your feedback and input on what you'd like to see from this series, and the next episode will be us heading into January and trying to figure out some of the early moves. All right, things are looking a little bit better for us. 19 points through 16 matches. We are currently 15th in the league table. For those who do not know, there are 24 teams in this league. The bottom four get relegated. Right now, that includes Tranmere Rovers, who, of course, we will always have a soft spot for. The two automatic promotion spots, it takes 39 points to be there. Now, looking at Portsmouth... That's kind of the one issue that's still there with FIFA Career Mode, but at this point, I don't believe it's going to be fixed, at least not in a timely manner, especially with, I'm sure, the holiday break coming up for employees. So, yeah, that's why I started this series now, because while I do find it ridiculous just how frequently some teams go undefeated in a season and how often certain teams go winless... It's about as good as it's going to get. So, I mean, you look at Wimbledon, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't win a game for the entire season. So that does happen somewhat frequently. So right now, 19 points. I mean, we could easily be up as you know to 12th. It's it's still we're still in a good spot, given all the changes uh, that we've made and that will continue to be made with this team over the next few months with our first season in charge. Now, our final scouting report of the episode, we start off with, I guess that would be... Would that be Ika Ketola? I'm guessing it's Ika. Ika Ketola, 69 to 93. 
Going to have a low overall, though, but he's 15 years old. We're going to sign him, obviously. Ansi Niemi. 63, or not 60, yeah, 63 to an 85, but also 6 foot 3, which is what I was going to read. Uh, we'll sign him up as well. Sulo Yuho. <laughs> sign him up. Anton Elias. I guess, uh, well, it could be, I guess it'd be, it'd be Elias or Ilias, I guess. But still, sign him up just in case. And then Siltala is going to be dropped. So he's one of the rare few that we've had to reject thus far. So through the opening few months of the season, let's actually take a quick look. We'll take a look at the Youth Academy and our focused upon players that we have on the roster already. So Turkus Siltala, I'm really interested in, but right now, I, looking at this, I don't think we're going to end up signing him. He's a 46 at 15 years old. That potential dropped a little bit. We'll see. He might still be an interesting player just to have someone with a bit of height off the bench, but with the way headers work in this game, eh, tough to say. Uh, Kimo Laukinen, again, low overall at his age. The potential's still decent, though. Tapio Altonen, again, going to be a major player for us in this series. Koivula, I'm going to hold on to for now, just in case. Tommy Niemi's still looking okay. Ansi Niemi, of course, he's, he's looking okay too. That gives us another option at goal or in goal along with Consta. Yuho, eh, we'll see. Miko Consta, the other Consta is looking phenomenal. Hakarainen, of course, just can't wait to be able to sign him. Samuel Consta still looking okay, but Niemi is looking like he's going to be our preferred keeper. Though Consta is a year younger, so there's going to be competition between those two. I kind of want to keep Samuel Consta if we're going to be signing Miko as well. You have Kali Satala, low overall, but the potential's looking great. Temu Samula, looking pretty damn good as well. Laksanen, still fine. Uh, we have a good left back, Anton Elias, looking decent, low overall, though. Overall, I mean, there is some decent potential here. Quite a few 70s to 90s, and then the 186 to a 94. Yami Hakarainen is going to be the star of this team. Miko Konsta, of course, looking damn good, too. So we are off to a very good start in that way and then you look at the squad hub as it stands of course we've been playing Usatalo a ton he's the only one that's really been playing Robin Coleman just isn't worth trying to develop so Usatalo is the focus right now until those other youth academy goalkeepers are ready to go Victor Luiz really hasn't been playing and here we'll look at the stats actually this is a better way to look at it so you have Henry uh, Toivomaki who's only up by one at this point but he's 27 O'Shaughnessy at 25 years old still a 64 you have Nikolai Alho who's you know still a decent option for us of course it's weird though because he's a right back he just plays the right side has four goals and three assists in 14 matches Ronnie uh, Papenin up to a 61 Leitonen up to a 52 other options, you have Sebastian Dahlstrom up to a 63. Tell me how to pronounce that first name, but Karainen up to a 65. Vananen, I'm guessing. I'm not entirely sure, but up to a 58. We also have Forsell has been playing a lot. He's still a 69, though. 29 years old for him. Plus one there. I'm mainly intrigued by the likes of Kevin Kowasavi Benisan, I'm guessing. KKB is what we're calling him, and he is one of the decent options for us to build up. He's gotten some games. Rico Risky, who, of course, you would have known from the first episode. We are keeping him for now. And then Etu Vertanen up by two. The injury didn't really help. So i got to be honest. I'm really happy with where this team is. The amount of talent that we've recruited already through the Youth Academy is going to make the series very interesting. Just let me know what you think, though, in terms of... How much do we play? Because I'm not against essentially playing every game and having it be highlight form, but especially as the team continues to improve. I mean, right now, I might not win every game, but as the team continues to improve, it's tough to say. We've handled it in the past where important games in the league and in tournaments I play, but that might not result in us seeing this team in action anytime soon, at least through this first season because of where we are in the standings. But again, it's it's tough to say, right? I'm kind of intrigued at using these lower level players and seeing how they progress, but we can do that whether through playing or not. So I'll leave it up to you guys, as I always do. Thank you very much for checking out this video and for having interest in this series, despite the fact that we had to put it on hold for months, thanks to EA just doing what they did and expecting people to enjoy a subpar product. It's the only way to put it. I will see you guys 
in the next one. Until then, have a good one. Take it easy, and bye-bye.